What message do you have for Yankees fans? You know, um, I wrote a little something the other day, and um, you know, Ryan, find it for me, please. It's a it's a text message to uh, Pat George, um, a good friend of mine, and we share Christian thoughts, if you will. And um, it was like, uh, you know, let's pay attention. Uh, let's realize the things that we need to do. Um, I do think that there's something a little bit greater going on, if you will. And I brought this up and I said, uh, I've been wearing my gloves, washing my hands and leaving my shoes at the back door when I get home. A crazy world we're in. We have peace about it, though, as we know that the good Lord is in charge. We think the world was moving too fast. That was me personally. Um, I think that too much has been thought about I, not enough about we, not enough about him and getting on our hands and knees for to be grateful and be thankful. Um, hopefully this slows us down a little bit and we realize relationships with family, friends, and God are priority while we're here on earth. Let us heed of this notice so that he doesn't have to shake the trees a little bit harder the next time he wants us to realize that we might be a little bit off track. So, you know, I just kind of want to say, uh, are we grateful for our jobs? Are we grateful for, you know, our friends and family? Um, do we spend enough time with our kids? Do we thank our wife for a great day? Um, you know, these are the things that I think about, and these are the things I, I want to see us take notice. Um, are we running past the people that need help uh, while everyone's got a job? Look how many people now that are, are struggling already with just 30 days of no work, three weeks of no work. So let's be conscious of others and be conscious of, of who we are as a nation and as a group. And certainly our, our Yankee fans are certainly part of that. And so that's what my concern is. Uh, the people where our home is in the Bronx. In the meantime, let's reminisce a little. I think that fills people's hearts as well. <laughs> and let's take you back to 1978, and I'll pinpoint the time. Following All right. the All-Star break, you know where I'm going. 14 games back, take us inside the clubhouse. Did you really believe you were going to come all the way back? And how did that momentum start rolling? You know, Nancy, I remember uh, in June, um, April, May, June, it might have been in the July. Um, and the Boston Red Sox came to town maybe the first week or the last week in June, and they were 51 and 19. Um, and, you know, we just wondered, you know, how we were going to catch him. Could we catch him? Our pitching was hurt. Everybody was struggling as a team. But I can honestly say that, uh, you know, we didn't know how we were going to do it, but you had no choice. You had played eight, uh, what was it, 70 games and had, uh, you know, 90 to go. Um, and so certainly I think, I don't know whether it was that time right there, really, Nancy, that we started, but I remember that 51-19 term. I remember going to Boston for the series that we got massacred up there yes. uh, in June. And I remember we came back in September and we beat them four in a row. And I was lottering next to Lou Pinella. Uh, and we had gone from three and a half games out to one half game in with the sweep. And I looked at him, it was like September 8th or 9th, and I looked at him and I said, what do we do now? And Lou said, we keep winning. Um, and I think at that time we won something like 24 and, 24, 24 and 6 or something like that down a stretch and, um, you know, caught the Red Sox obviously at that time and then stayed ahead of them until the last game of the season. And in the last game of the season, um, we had lost the game to Rick Waits of the Cleveland Indians. He beat us on a Sunday. And if we had lost that game, then we had to play on Monday. And we didn't have a pitcher. I think Gidry had pitched on Friday. Um, okay. and, and I think he pitched on Friday, and we couldn't find a pitcher to pitch. And I remember Gator picked up, his, picked up the ball, or he was in his underwear and his top, and he went into uh, Bob Lemon's office, and he said, I'm pitching, I'm pitching tomorrow. And um, yeah, I think he pitched on two days or three days rest. And 
you know, the rest of the story is history. We wound yeah. up, uh, you know, beating the Red Sox in that one game. And yeah. in 78, we had the playoffs against, against, the, against the Kansas City Royals. And then we went on to, to play the Dodgers. For the second year in a row, second it's the Dodgers. Row, and we lost the first two. Right. We lost the first two. And I said to a guy who's walking down the street, and uh, his name was Tony Rolfe. And I said, Tony, if you're a betting man, bet the Yankees are going to win the World Series, bet the Yankees are going to win tonight, and bet the Yankees are going to win four in a row. And that night when we went out, I think Gidry pitched, and he got hit hard at home. And Greg Nettles uh, yes. played, played like Brooks Robinson and the Hoover vacuum cleaner, if you will. Now he, that was – if you can call it a turning point, it was his defense that made it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the, the defense of Greg Nettles that night was spectacular. Uh, Gidry pitched well again, but you don't pitch well if Nettles doesn't have that flawless night. And so. And then uh, take us to game six. Game and six. And the moment. And, and, what? and your home run. Uh, game six, um, you know, I think I had, I think during. The, the first couple games, I had to strike out at home plate against Welsh uh, in, in, in the first two games. You guys had some great battles, you and Welsh. Yes. Uh, Matt went for 12 or 14 pitches a long time. It was a – I guess it was a Casey at the back because Casey struck out too, right? Yes. Okay. So, so I struck out that time. <laughs> and then in, in game six, back in L.A. Um, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Uh, in game six back in L.A., uh, I remember being on the bench and Catfish Hunter was sitting there, and they brought Bob Welsh in to pitch to me. And uh, Bob Wel uh, uh, Catfish Hunter said, go get him, Buck, because I was nicknamed Buck when I played with Oakland. He and I played with Oakland together. And I left the dugout to hit a home run off of him. Um, and I don't know if it was a first or second pitch, but I hit a ball almost out of Dodger Stadium over the bullpen there. Uh, in right field, and that was kind of a, you know, a pouring the syrup on. We beat him there. And, uh, Pretty much the nail on the coffin. Was it special to you going back to back? Was that meaningful? Um, well, it was absolutely meaningful. Uh, you know, George had put the team together and spent a lot of money, and we were way out in front with, you know, I, I don't know, maybe a 30 or $40 million payroll, if you will. But um, certainly take a look at now, it's a huge difference. But, um, you know, they had, we were the best team that money could buy, if you will, is what they were saying. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, when I was playing with Oakland, as I said, we expected to win. And, when, and with the ball club that we had put together, uh, Thurman Munson was, had, was very close to George. And there were a couple of players that he had recommended uh, there and he and Lou Pinella had George's ear. In fact, I got in trouble for that. But uh, they had George's ear, and uh, we had had a we had a great ball club, and we really did expect to win, Nancy, uh, those games. So certainly we celebrated. We were happy, grateful, and glad. But um, it was what we were supposed to do, and I think the the difficulty in doing it, and then all of a sudden when you did win. Um, the letdown really, the, the come down emotionally made you happy and brought tears to your eyes. And at one time during the season, uh, George had uh, came down and spoke to us and said, I'm going to pull up a truck out here and back it up and throw all you guys on it and get rid of you. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was a story that he told us. And, uh, you know, they didn't want to give him any credit, credit for it. But every time he came down and kicked a couple of chairs and and told us a couple of uh, stories that he was going to throw us out by our shirt and neckties. Um, uh, we always seem to respond. Fantastic. <laughs> Reggie, thank you. Those stories, so meaningful for all time for all Yankees fans. It's yeah. wonderful to see you. Take care. Always a pleasure. Hey, thanks, Nancy. And uh, <laughs> I hope to see you again soon.